Hi, everybody. We're going to be talking about the incredibly exciting and existential topic of proof of reserves, the audit and accounting side of Bitcoin. My name is Sam Abbasi. I'm co-founder and CEO uh, of Hoseki. We are a digital asset verification and authentication platform. Um, been in this space for about seven years now, uh, most recently at Fidelity, where I worked on open source custody solutions, lightning, uh, zero knowledge proof work, and towards the end of my tenure on proof of reserves. So at Hoseki, uh, digital asset authentication and verification is our bread and butter. Uh, our objective is to empower Bitcoiners to get loans, personal loans, car loans, mortgages, citizenship applications, really anything that can leverage their Bitcoin. Um, our thesis is that we're getting to a point now where Bitcoin needs to be financialized in some real capacity, uh, doing more than just buying, holding, and selling, but actually being able to leverage uh, the asset itself. Um, we're, it's, it's quite an early space, and this isn't really uncommon um, in other spaces as it relates to, let's say, developing countries where people are rich in the assets they own, but they don't have the legal framework um, or any of the underlying infrastructure to actually leverage their assets in any real way. And Bitcoin is definitely sort of following that same trajectory. Uh, what's unique about Bitcoin, though, is that this sort of proof of funds application is baked into the thing itself because of pu public private key uh, cryptography. So let's, let's first jump into proof of reserves um, and kind of define what that is. Uh, you know, admittedly, because a lot of, um, a lot of the things that, a lot of the terms that we use in the space were defined by engineers early on. And so the business application of it, it might be a little bit more disconnected than it should be. Uh, a lot of people mean different things when they say proof of reserves. Uh, some people mean the on-chain assets, some people mean the liabilities, and some people uh, mean solvency, which ultimately is how we define proof of reserves. It's the proof of reserves, your on-chain assets, uh, your liabilities, and if your assets are more than your liabilities, well, you're solvent. If they're equal, you're still solvent. If your liabilities are greater than your reserves or your assets, then you're insolvent. Um, now, the, the reserves side, the on-chain assets side, is very clean and easy. Uh, Bitcoin does that by definition. Uh, auditing that, having transparency, having visuals on um, the ownership of those assets isn't really a technical challenge. The liabilities, however, is. There isn't a, any real way to solve the liability side of this equation. Ultimately, it's an exchanges or a custodian's books, and that data is being put into some sort of like either a blockchain or some kind of cryptographic uh, tool. Uh, but that's really just cryptographic magic for the sense of cryptographic magic. You're still trusting the data that's being put into, um, into the process. So uh, it's never going to be as clean as Bitcoin because Bitcoin is truth. So you're always relying on either an, either an auditor, a, a traditional auditor, which, um, you know, the history of auditors isn't really as robust as you might think. Um, but on the Bitcoin side, you don't have to worry about that at all. So we focus on the reserves. Um, when I was at Fidelity, we did some work on liabilities, applying sort of zero knowledge proofs, um, making things you know, as trustless as we could, uh, but it's still not as clean as Bitcoin. So our argument is, if there is an exchange and a custodian that's holding customer funds, they should at least be able to assess the on-chain assets and have real-time visibility um, with those assets. So this is an outdated chart, but even the fact that it's outdated, it's still unbelievable. Um, this doesn't take into account FTX or Celsius, but these are the history of exchange hacks and compromises. Um, exchanges and custodians haven't really been the best players in the space for one reason or another, either for inadequate security apparatuses or for outright fraud. Um, and you know, we've had a lot of money stolen and a lot of money lost throughout our history. Uh, the proof of reserves concept was first defined in 2011, 2012, um, and its application is rather slow. And the reason for that is because it's sort of a two-part process. One, customers need to, need to demand it from their exchanges to become compliant with a proof of reserves regime. Um, and secondly, the regulators would have to pretty much force them to do so because they don't really have any incentive otherwise. Um, but just to give you a visual of really what the damage looks like when there isn't any transparency with the on-chain assets, this is it. Um, to give you an example of what it would have looked like if FTX had a proof of reserves set up, we would have seen their Bitcoin holdings in real time. We would, we would have also seen it deplete in real time. So it may not have, let's say, prevented the crash from happening, but it would have certainly mitigated it to, to, a, to, a, to a certain extent. Um, now, before I get into this, I just want to sort of explain why this process is so simple and so straightforward. Um, 
a Bitcoin transaction, and forgive me if some of you know how this works, but this mental model helps some of the gray hairs in Fidelity. Um, a Bitcoin transaction is a two-step process, and that two-step process is pretty much identical to a physical check. You write the check, you sign the check, which proves that you're authorizing funds to move, and then you actually take the check to the bank for the funds to move. You can have a signed check on your desk, uh, but funds will not move if you don't take that second step. And the same thing applies to Bitcoin. You can pre-sign a transaction. You have a valid transaction. That's perfectly good. But unless you broadcast that transaction to the network, funds aren't going to move. So when we talk about proof of reserves, we're really just talking about that cryptographic guarantee, the cryptographic signatures you can get from Bitcoin uh, by virtue of the fact that it uses public-private key cryptography, which isn't a Bitcoin-specific thing, um, but it certainly is a feature of the money itself. You know, no one knows exactly how many dollars exist in the world with any actual sense of accuracy, and no one knows how much gold exists in the world either. They're estimates. Uh, Bitcoin is novel in that sense because you can, we can audit as a third party with no special permissions or privileges. We can audit to the smallest unit and know exactly how much exists at the macro level, but also at the micro level. I can prove to you that I own certain Bitcoin by providing a signature. Um, and you can also put m more robust apparatuses around that, timing the signatures, having the signatures happen as sort of some, some set of intervals as well. Um, but that's really sort of why Bitcoin is so powerful. It's this audit function that's really underutilized. And at Hoseki, that's what we're focused on, exploiting that as much as possible. And so what, what does this look like in practice? Well, we work with ETF issuers, for instance, so they can verify their assets with us. We represent that on our leaderboard of different ETF issuers and um, organizations. Um, and, and, this, and this builds better trust, frankly. It, 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 it's, a, it's a good form factor for their investors to have some sense of assurance that A, those funds exist, they're with a certain custodian, um, and the anomaly detection that comes along with this really builds for a much more uh, robust ecosystem. So this is the uh, Bitwise ETF, for example. Uh, we also made an announcement with MetaPlanet recently as well. Um, again, helping organizations be more transparent, especially public organizations, be more transparent with their on-chain funds um, is really critical. Some of the organizations we work with, for example, aren't comfortable sharing their addresses publicly. Um, you know, a lot of these Wall Street folks don't want to be mentioned in the same sentence as OFAC sanctioned wallets. Uh, you avoid that by obfuscating some of the information and having us as this disinterested third party in between that does nothing else, doesn't do custody, we don't do loan origination. We simply verify the assets. So that's proof of reserves at the institutional level, at a high level. Um, but something I've been really keen on is applying proof of reserves to an individual. So when I first got involved in Bitcoin, when I got sold on Bitcoin, I was told that I could be my own bank. Um, but I quickly learned that there aren't many banking services. Um, chief amongst them is proving that I own my funds. So for example, I tried to get a mortgage uh, um, significant amount of Bitcoin, yet the lender, uh, the mortgage broker, had no way to assess or verify my assets. They could do so with my traditional assets, my stocks, my bonds, my income. Uh, they're used to seeing those form factors, but there wasn't a clean and easy form factor on the Bitcoin side. Typically, you'd have to maybe move your funds to Coinbase and print out a statement, but these statements are also rather uh, inconsistent. They're missing information that they would want to see. And so we realized very quickly the infrastructure for financializing Bitcoin, which is where we think the space is headed at this point, is still missing. And the most basic part is simply proving that I own these assets. You can verify them. You can monitor them in perpetuity. The customers that we work with today are really interested um, and they love this product because it gives them a much better understanding of their borrower profile. Uh, they're able to now have a more complete financial assessment of who their borrowers are, previously missing all the crypto data. Um, but this better empowers them to build better products, uh, build better services for this growing demographic. You know, the, the number of Americans that own uh, Bitcoin is now on par with the number of Americans that own, that own stocks. So this, we're, we're, a, we're a growing demographic and we're very, you know, attractive as well as the price appreciates over time. Um, so ultimately, we, we have this sort of plaid-like widget that allows you to uh, prove to any other counterparty, either a brokerage, let's say, to have a, co a more consolidated view of your portfolio uh, um, uh, uh, listings, uh, or with the loan originator so they can monitor your assets in perpetuity. But it's a clean and easy, um, clean and easy API. This is designed to really sort of take a lot of the load off of these third-party integrators because we maintain all the integrations with the different exchanges, which change on a 
quarterly basis or so, or a six or six month basis, we manage all the Bitcoin um, uh, sort of uh, wallet um, idiosyncrasies, and and we make it very clean and easy to sort of um, understand and utilize. So, if there's any organization who's interested in using uh, Hoseki and, and becoming transparent with their on-chain funds, you can reach out to us. You can reach out to partnerships at hoseki.app uh, or find us on Twitter at Hoseki app. Um, we'd, love to, we'd love to work with you. We'd love to sort of build better confidence for your borrowers, for your investors. Um, so yeah, definitely reach out to us. Thank you.